Runs with the very large flat carbon spokes on. Yeah, uh, absolutely awesome wheel to ride in the, in, the, in the road race. Super aerodynamic and very, very stiff. Yeah. And also like a bacon slicer if you stuck your hand in it. Oh, we did use them <laughs> on a training camp and actually um, we, we chopped cucumbers with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's why, <laughs> that's why the UCI banned them. You, you clearly, you can chop cucumbers, but you can't dice tomatoes to go with it. <laughs> oh, liberty in the box, oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm going to have to try and be a straight face now. Okay, right, 11 kilometres to go. Argos Shimano are on the front. They've got, uh, as we say, Marcel Kittel uh, uh, keen to even the score with uh, fellow German Andre Greipel. Greipel's been looking magnificently calm and composed, has him that are in excess of those of Marcel Kittel, who wants to draw level. 18 seconds only now uh, as Mahailov leads them around the bend into... The, uh, well, this is where the crosswind will come into to play with 10 kilometers to go because they're moving out of this tailwind and into a sidewind, I would suspect. Now, Rofinetto. 18 seconds with 10k to go. That's um, going to take some <laughs> something special to get home there. Yeah, I don't think so, somehow. Now uh, the wind's not super hot, super uh, strong, otherwise we'd see those palm trees rattling around like crazy. Orica boys on the front. It's a little bit early just yet, boys. Just calm it down. Yeah, I don't think they're going too too hard, are they? They're just sort of just keeping the pace going there because a lot mm -hmm. of movement around the side and uh, it would be... Uh, you can see there's not too much going on. They're not bringing these guys back too much. There's 16 seconds still separating the breakaway from the main peloton and uh orica yeah you're right you're right in saying i mean if you were the ds you'd be thinking right let's just slow it down a bit slow it down a little bit people like thomas fight should know that and go right okay let's bring it down a bit a little yeah. bit yeah well, although now we've got you know other teams wanting to keep the pace high again well it's, it's obviously safer when when the pace is really high uh, especially with the wide roads that we've got here in in tour of turkey um the faster you go, the more strung out it gets, the less problems you tend to have. And uh, the best way to do that is probably get, uh, well, it is to get a couple of uh, couple of teams together and start doing, uh, you know, sharing the workload and keeping that pace up there. But Argos Shimano rider just take taking one of those big, big, big turns and then swing straight off and, and disappears and into uh, into the back of it. Um, and that's, uh, you know. One of them things you need to, with nine kilometers to go, just uh, keep it ticking, keep getting back in there. You've started something now, Magnus. Stuart Abel says, never mind a cucumber, we sliced a potato once with a spinach yet. <laughs> <laughs> Chips, anyone? <laughs> Freak, should I say. Uh, maybe there was a good reason they were banned. Oh. Eight kilometres remaining and uh, 13 seconds separate our breakaway riders. They only went away with about uh, 53 kilometres to go. Uh, the first breakaway that's been allowed to get away today and really just a bit of a show uh, for the cameras. There's always a bit of a chance you can stay away, but, you know, today, uh, a good old sprint day. Quite a slippery road surface on the way in, and I mean that because it, not because it's got anything on it particularly, but you can see it's quite, even here, you can see it's quite a uh, polished surface, and that's not the not worn tarmac, so to speak, but they, at this point, uh, there's a lot of pebbles in with the roads, like you perhaps see on Mallorca, if you've ever been there, on the climb to Salor. Very, Salor, very, the, very much the same. Going up's all right, coming down's quite dangerous if you're not experienced at it. it it's almost like it polishes the surface of the of the pebbles within the tarmac and makes it very slippery indeed if you're not careful. Go on, Michael. This is pretty much what um, Ilya Kayser did last year. Took off on his own with, uh, I think it was 5k to go, he yeah, went. Five, yeah. And Ilya Kayser, a great six-day rider and used to this sort of effort. Uh, but this man here, Michael Hepburn, a brilliant uh, pursuiter, uh, he's used to a four-kilometer effort. Maybe seven's a little bit far for him. It might be a little bit far, but as you can see, the peloton is bearing down on, yeah. on that group. He was now and never. If he was going to have a go, then 
um, he couldn't really afford to wait any longer. Well, they've seen it before, they're not going to let it happen again. Uh, it's difficult to pull, uh, pull, pull a stunt like that off twice in, in, in a row, you know. Michael Hepburn. Very fine track rider, very fine team pursuiter. With Jack Bobridge and uh, well, all sorts of others, but Rowan Dennis. Oh, hello. It's time to uh, put the hammer down. This is interesting. Well, they saw the Ilio Casa got away with it last year here uh, with that 500 metres to go to the finish, the hairpin turn. And now Lamprey have a go. I think it's going to get quite scrappy here unless a team really take charge on the front, uh, like an Argos Shimano come to the front and just lay down the law. I reckon it might get quite scrappy here. It, um, it does look like it. And, and I don't think it's one team that needs to take charge of this. There's a couple of teams that need to work together. You can see Argo Shimano, you know, they're doing these big, big turns and then pulling off and then drifting straight back out through the back end of the peloton. Right now, they need to keep men up there. Uh, as they've just gone past the five kilometer to go banner, uh, they need to keep guys and come back in like a team time trial and work at it like that. Just doing these one off big, um, big hits is never gonna, uh, it's not gonna work. Good ride by Michael Hepburn, but uh, here uh, Argos, uh, Argos Shimano have gone off the back as Astana try and set this up for, uh, I would guess, Gardini. Yeah, Gardini, but uh, Alan Davies there, seen, he, he was sitting in the second wheel behind uh, Kevin Sealdrace, and as soon as Sealdrace swung out, Alan Davies was looking around him. I'm not going anywhere because I've got a man up the road. Yeah, quite. He's drifted back a little bit there now. Oh, swings over. Look at the quick step riders on the left hand side. Just all moving up towards the front. One, two, three, four, five of the uh, Omega Pharma quick step riders. They've got a number of fast riders as well. Andy Fenn, Stiegmans, Trenton, they're all pretty quick. They're all very quick, aren't they? Interesting to see whether Stigmans has the um, has the power to go for uh, for a sprint. I'd like to see him have a, have another go. Tell you what, Michael Hepburn's doing a great job here. Mm, he's still uh, out by himself. Certainly making them work for it, isn't he? He is absolutely, and he's making more than one team work for it as well. Nertap and Jura. Still, look, one, two, three, four riders from Omega Farmer Quickstep up towards the front. And who are they riding for? Looks like Stiegman's at the back of this little train of uh, Omega Pharma riders. We'll have to see. Now Orica Green is coming around the uh, right-hand side of the peloton, bringing men towards the front. As Netap Endura are as well. It's Rabon, and then, uh, yeah, I think Stiegman's is the man they're riding for here. Maybe it could, it could be Andy Fenn. Could be, but it looks like a very tall rider at the back, which yeah. indicates Stigman's mind. Your Fenn's not small, but he's not as big as Stigman's. That was an interesting little turn there. Mm. Three kilometres to go. Some rider's been caught out on the right-hand side. Not quite the place to be. You've got a uh, quite a big uh, sort of roundabout that you go uh, go half, well, you go uh, straight across it more or less, but without obviously uh, jumping over things. So it's quite a sharp corner coming up here. Left-hander. Oh, that was a bit dodgy. Doing a little bit of cyclocross across this road and trying to get back into the group. Yeah, they got caught on the wrong, the wrong side yeah. of this. And uh, there is Still a... Up. I don't think there is a way to actually get back in from there. That is very, very difficult indeed. They're backing off the pedals completely. They can't get across. They can't get across because uh, when I rode this circuit earlier, I could see all the barriers lining them up so that they were supposed to be on the left-hand side. The only place they can do it would be up here, but race is over it. for them. The race is over completely. That's Orica Green Edge on the right-hand side have been caught out. That yeah. will be... Um, well, the two, that'll be Krupis and... Uh, whoop, there's a watch out for this right-hander. Just make sure everybody gets through all right. The Krupis and Lee Howard, I would imagine, who were caught out on that right-hand side of the barriers. Could very well have been, and uh, that's a shame for uh, Orica, obviously. Running underneath the palm trees, this long, long 
line of palm trees. Rabon did a big turn on the front. Yeah, they need to keep this That's going, though, because from the last corner, it's, uh, it's just about 800 metres, I think. This is Andy Fenn putting the power down now. It is Stevens they're working for. Third back in line. Look at uh, United Healthcare here. Yeah, very well, very well sitting there. And Astana trying to fight towards the front of being uh, Guardini. Or could be uh, Guarnieri, either one. But uh, Guardini, I would imagine, up towards the front. Still fighting, fighting, fighting. That looks like Pozzato in there. It is, yep. Yep. Filippo Pozzato, the first of the uh, Lamprey riders. Here we go. This is uh, coming into the finale of today's day. Oh, would you believe it? Would you believe it? A crash, the, 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 exactly the place that brought down Elio Kaysa last year has brought down a load more today and it looks like omega farmer quick step are sitting pretty here look Watch at Colin. Kittel coming on the left hand side of your picture yep Kittel on the far left hand side has got a, uh, nicholas arm with him he's right in the center of the shot now just behind Colodan. uh guarini is sat at the back of this group i'm not sure who the net up enduro boy is in here this sprint at the moment oh it's a looking around job as Stegmans, I think, drives for the line. It's not Stegmans. It's not Stegmans, no. Driving to the line is Kittle on the left-hand side. Easily fastest here at the moment. Kittle pushing towards the line. It's going to be an easy win for Marcel Kittle. Takes his second victory. <laughs> what a scrappy end. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe they all came down on the corner that brought down Ilya Kaysa? And yeah. I think it's because it's just a, such a tight turn and everybody was fighting to get through. It's a shame we didn't actually see it. We only saw the aftermath. Yeah, they didn't, uh, obviously didn't, didn't sort of see how sharp that corner is. And it's, uh, it's difficult sometimes when you're looking at the map and seeing how, how tight the corner is. And uh, obviously a couple of guys getting it wrong. And unfortunately, one of those guys was... Um, my old friend Francesco Kikio was uh, having quite big hopes for us. See here, that's where it all went wrong for uh, quite a few riders, actually. Oh, more than a few. Here we go. Here we go. Who's so going first, then? Who goes down? Does anybody collide with the barriers, or do they slip on the, uh, the stones? Or a touch of wheels? Oh, there we are, in the middle. It's the Quebec rider, and it might have been Kiki, actually. It might have been Kiki that went first, or his yep. lead-up man, yeah. Uh, so, uh, coming together between uh, Vini Fantini and uh, MTN Quebec. And quite a scrappy finish in the end. Uh, Kittle had uh, plenty of free air to get through. No real problems there. He had to go from quite far out as well, by the looks of it. Yeah, Sonny uh, Colbrelli trying to hang in there, but uh, just completely out, outclassed. And I think is that uh, Sebastian uh, Chavanel? Coming through, not quite sure. Fine win for Marcel Kittel, though. Brian Cookard, I think, probably. A bit shorter than. Let's have a look at the face when we see it in a second. Marcel Kittel is clearly the fastest of the uh, riders here. That is Brian Cookard on the left hand side. Yep. Uh, typical, sort of very low on the bike, hangs his head on the right uh, hand side and also very typical for uh, for a track rider yep. points race rider never really getting out of the seat no very much so kito from uh, gardini who got the, through that maximiliano ricesi for lamprey fought as hard as he could to stay on the the wheel of marcel kittel but couldn't manage it then Brian Cocard, Sonny Colbrelli, and Jacob, uh, Jacob Kio. I think the rider from uh, Quickstep actually got through there was uh, Nicholas Mace. Uh, large rider. Let's have a look again. Here we go around the corner. Oh, Sergei Gretchen. In the, almost uh, coming to gr grief there as well. Remember, if anything happens to anybody in the last three kilometers of a race like this, uh, they are given the same time as the group that they were in, so they will get uh, get a group uh, group all together. They won't lose all those 40 seconds to somebody. No. 
Here we are, Kittel, Goradini, Riccesi, Brian Kokar, Sonny Colbrelli, Jacob uh, Kio, Jacob Kio, Francisco Lasca, and then Jakob Latz. He came down on the cobbles in the Arenberg, as you remember. Edis Krupis and Nicholas Mace then uh, would have been their quick step rider who led them through. Kittel very happy and unsurprisingly class of the uh, sprints there. Yeah, I mean, the, the way he came up there, his teammate brought him up uh, just in about right time after having got through that final corner and um, it wasn't really a question of who was going to win that one. Just by far the strongest man. Good, uh, good riding by Guardini though. He managed to get through the, the mess and uh, he pulled himself up through two or three riders to get that second place. That was good. Yeah, he did definitely. Uh, it's he's not really been on, on super form lately, uh, Guardini. He's, um, you know, I'm kind of expecting that little bit more of him yeah. all the time and I don't know whether I'm wrongly doing so or not, but um, here we go. Confirmation of UGC. Mustafa Seya leads by 41 seconds still over in the Hanil Bahani and failing uh, all uh, disasters for him and those could come in many forms remember uh, he will win the tour of turkey uh, ahead of Nahan, nathaniel bahani johan bajo uh, maxine Mederel, nicholas edde kamar at 102 darwin at a puma at 108 florian julu at 109 uh, andranov uh, just behind those but the stage win goes to marcel kittel to a piece for himself and fellow countryman andre greipel Tomorrow's stage eight, the final stage of the Tour of Turkey and my final stage in a race for the next ooh, uh, two months until the Tour de France. I'm going to take a bit of time off. 121 kilometers from Istanbul around in a loop back into Istanbul again. The most fantastic city, Istanbul. It's totally crackers all the way along uh, the coast. And the old town is just, the old city is absolutely fabulous. Well, we hope you enjoyed today. This hairpin's going to become famous, believe me. Over the last two years, it's been fantastic. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.